Yo, Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. And boy, do we have some nigga shit for y'all today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we do. I mean, we do. We do. We, we do. Way to set the tone for the podcast. Shit. Way to set the tone. Boy, do we have a lot. We got snitching. We got the most bizarre case I've ever seen. We got all kinds of stuff, but we also got to talk about P22. We have a couple of guests today bringing back Glasses Malone to talk about Gunna. I know how much you guys love glasses. And <laughs> we're also uh, bringing, it, bringing in Beth Pratt, Save LA Cougar. She's going to talk to us about P22 and what's going on with my guy, man. What's would you P22? would you say this is the guest you're probably most excited for or most I wanna, interested? I want to be I want to be a part of what Beth is doing. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Beth is is who you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. Beth yeah. is uh that's that was that was in a way not great. That the way, <laughs> the way you just said that. I look at it now and I thought that it was good, but in a way it was messed up. It was it, it was messed okay. up. We're all going to get to some okay. more important things later on. Uh, I want to talk about the groundbreaking nuclear fusion um, breakthrough that happened. But we know what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to bring a, a expert on to talk about that. Yes, I tried to I tried to <laughs> do the the knowledge on that. Same. I said, Mm-mm. man, when you when you first brought it up, I thought, wow, he really knows way more about science and and all of this than I do. I mean, I I know it's it's a good thing and it and it's an advancement, but I was like, I do not understand this. I thought he is well, definitely I, I, going to take the lead. On- I'm not about to, I'm not about to Neil deGrasse Tyson that shit. Was a completely different discipline anyway. But it's such a uh, a, a consequential thing that we definitely want to talk about it because sure. as, we have we. As, you know, as the earth, as stewards of the earth, we should start thinking about our sources of energy and what's happening. Are you are you familiar with the Aguala Aquifer? Do you know about this? Um, I am not. So let me make sure I'm saying it right. Aguala, Aguala Aquifer. I watched something on it uh this this weekend. Okay. okay. Do you know first of all, do you know what an aquifer is? Something with water. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> when, people are talk, when people are talking about rage. It's the Ogallala Aquifer. Ogallala Aquifer. It is a, this is what it is. It is a shallow table aquifer surrounded by sand, silt, clay, and gravel located beneath the Great Plains in the United States. It is one of the world's, world's largest aquifers. It underlines an area get this, of 174,000 square miles in portions of eight states. That's South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Texas, okay? Um, 80% of the high plains, basically an aquifer, gigantic underwater lake, an aquifer is an underground layer of water bearing permeable rock, rock fractures, or unconsolidated materials. Groundwater from aquifers can be extracted using a well. So whenever you hit a well down into the ground, you're hitting it to the boom, into the aquifer, you get water. Guess what happens? What? All right, so a large portion of the goddamn farming area of the country of America, the mainland, is getting their water supply from this gigantic aquifer. This affects Texas because a lot of stuff happens, you know, whatever. And the aquifer is running out of water. It's running out of water. Our nation's heartland. See, and I, I watched this thing and I was so captivated because we talk about Scary. so much about what people and i guess the rust belt or the heart of america need and they're telling you what they need is they need some sort of political and environmental strategy around the fact that they are actually going to run out of some of the water that they need to farm and nobody's listening to them 
Hmm. It was good. This well, I'm gonna send you this. Send it to the me. Ogallala Aquifer. And I was looking at all of these white people feeling bad for them. I'm like, they got it's like the guy, so he he he's showing that he, you know, he's getting water out of it. And when the water spraying, you can see it's like, you know how like when you suck on a straw at the end and it goes, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no more water. It's like, you yeah. know, you're, yes. you're running out of water. Where he was doing that with the little well thing that he had, the well, and the, it was doing that. It was sputtering because it was running out of water. This is a huge water source. And it, when the rain stops and the environment, all of this stuff, the global warming, it's fucking with these people. And this is generations and generations of people who've had farmland, and it's tough. So is there a way to replenish it? I don't know what they have to do. Because there's parts of Texas right here, too. Here's the aquifer. There's the thing. I don't know what they have to do. I don't really know what they have to do, but I know that they have ideas, and they don't have the... Um, the funding? The political the political infrastructure or the... I guess not political infrastructure. They don't have the the power to get anybody to pay attention to what's going on with them. People just say, screw it. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, the Ogallala Aquifer is in trouble. I've been looking at so many things that have to do with nature about different things, animals. Because once, because my, my algorithm has changed now. Now when you go to my YouTube algorithm, it's like all animals. <laughs> that, quickly. It's, it's, that quickly. That <laughs> quickly. Oh, no, no. It's all animals. It's bears. It's wolves. It's like different do you watch, snake situations. Do you watch those videos where animals are fighting animals and they do... Like the animated versions of them. Okay. No, I don't watch Animal Combat. I, I'm, I've. My dad does. I'm going through. My dad I'm, loves I'm going it. through a. No, <laughs> dads. All dads love that stuff. I'm going through a weird phase of animal in my life, well, to where I had to do for the rewatchables. Oh, okay. Um, all the dog. And I fast forwarded through it. Couldn't watch it. Yeah. Couldn't watch it. Like, could not, like, couldn't watch it. Could not watch that part. I, I totally understand I that. Fast forward it. Couldn't watch the part. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that we're doing the rewatchables. I think that's supposed to be a surprise, but maybe bleep out the name of the movie. Um, Yeah, but look at us. So it's, and so I started looking around, and it, this thing about the aquifer popped up, and I watched the whole thing. People looking at me like, man, what are you doing? Send it to me. What are you looking at? Yeah. The aquifer system supplies up to 82% of the drinking water Ooh. for the people who live within the boundaries of the High Plains study area. Jesus Christ. The aquifer. The Keystone Pipeline. All of this stuff has to do with what we're doing. That's why it's very important that we talk about P-22 and that oh. your opinions about P-22 are brought to bear in front of somebody. And I'm looking forward to seeing if you can keep the same energy with her that you've kept your bloodthirsty I attitudes think I'll be fine. P-22. I think I'll be fine as long you, as you don't exaggerate things. I think I'll be fine. You've advocated for the death of P22 on this very podcast, have you I not? I did not advocate. I actually Johnny? said I actually said that he should go to a sh to somewhere else. I didn't say he should die. Did I say he hey, should so die, Donnie? Did I, I say he know. should go to You said Thank that he you. Murder. You said Okay, he I'm said challenging he any of the thought warriors because I know for sure that Rachel has advocated for the death of P22 on this you very podcast. You know what? Podcast. You're cleaning you know. out your ears right now. Do it a little yeah. bit more because I've never said he should die. That? I said that he should go, he should be off these streets. Yeah. Well, you put, you put him in jail. Look at you. Put, look at you. <laughs> Mass incarceration. Mass incarceration, cat incarceration. You're the never... Joe Biden. You're the Joe Biden of wildlife. You just want to lock all the wildlife up. All right. Well, you voted for him. And then later on, you're going to expect people to make you president. Did I? Oh, so you didn't vote? Oh, you did a write in? You voted for Kanye? Uh, I vote. I, I voted. I voted all right. I certainly didn't vote for the other guy. I voted all up and down the ticket. Did I? Did I think about that? Did I? I don't know, Van. I don't know. I did. Did I? Well, I voted. You know. I, I did. voted. All, did I? I definitely did. <laughs> uh, begrudgingly. <laughs> okay, Micah. You tagging did me? I, but you did, tagging me? Did I? Did I? Did I think about it, guys? Maybe I couldn't bring myself. To, maybe I couldn't bring myself to do it. Happy that the Republicans in their death cult didn't win, but maybe I realized that California was going to be a state that they were... Did I? Anyway, 
<laughs> Bring it um, back. Um uh, what are you doing this weekend? Um I have a holiday party on Friday. Where? I'm going to dinner with Kalika. What's the holiday party? My friend Mark. She's throwing a holiday party at his a uh, Christmas just party a, at his home. Just like a some person throwing a holiday party at their crib? That's what people do, man. They throw Christmas parties. That's Tis not, the I, season. No, I've n- never been to a personal Christmas party. I've never been to a Christmas party at somebody's crib. It's always really? an office Christmas party, a company Christmas party. I've never just known someone oh just my like gosh. a person. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've, I've never just been to that's a Christmas party. Why people have these Christmas parties? The ones that I've been to. What do they do there? It's like you would do at any other party, except this time it's festive with, with Christmas, you know, and Yuletide, whatever. So it's like there's drinks, there's Christmas music. You come dressed in Christmas colors and or holiday colors, I should say. Uh, yeah, it's just a gathering. We're going to have dinner, music. Mm-hmm. This friend like loves turn, to bring like a, a saxophonist to the event. He always is he has the most. Like a motherfucker playing the saxophone? And he's incredible. He can play anything. This, is, this sounds this sounds alluring in a lot of ways. Um, then Saturday I have to get my weave cut out, and Your then I'm cut out. and then I'm going to a comedy show on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what's the comedy show? Dave Chappelle. You going to the Dave Chappelle show? <laughs> I'm going to see Chris Rock. You're going to see Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle. Let me tell you something. I'm going to go see Chris Rock. You're going to the Dave Chappelle show. It's okay, Rachel. You defended Dave Chappelle in the last podcast. Oh, people are why. so mad at me. <laughs> now, we all, now we all know why. Look, I just find it very interesting. I find it very interesting. No phones, by the way. No phones. Well, fuck the hell no now. Yeah, like, yeah. You, I yeah, found that they, very interesting. They might make y'all come in there naked. I find it very interesting that this part, this, that this, that we could rename this podcast to the princess and the punching bag. You let it be. You let it be me that was going to a Dave Chappelle show, going down there to a Dave Chappelle show. Fans probably gonna hang out with them after and hang out with them. I'm uh, going and, to Chris and, Rock. And, and, huh? I'm you going want to, to see Chris, Chris Rock? Rock. See, they say Chris Rock is problematic. They say that he Did hates they? black women and he makes jokes at their expense over well, and over Will Smith and over and over that again. Away. You don't think he's going to do it anymore? You think Will Smith slap that out of him? I'll, I'll, I'll be back to report. I considered saying, should I even talk about the fact that I'm that I'm going? But, you know, I'm taking one for the team. Because Van would be like, see, you ain't sharing what you're doing. Well, I'm sharing. You asked, mm, well, I'm sharing. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh... I'm not doing anything on the weekend. And when I say I'm not doing anything on the weekend, I'm not doing anything for the rest of the year. Well, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. There's nothing wrong with go, that. I got to go see Avatar, Way of Water. That's going to take five and a half hours. You know, I have to do it. I have to pot on it. Um, but I'm chilling. And when I say that, I mean, stop asking me to do stuff. Man. This, this is a good message. It's not going to happen. My body tired. You know, like in uh in uh you ever see Pain Fool? Yeah. Of course. You haven't seen it. I have seen it. Tell me what happened. Have to I Pain have Fool. I, I ever li- I don't remember. But have I ever lied about it? I probably fell asleep in it, but I definitely pressed play on it at one point. But I've never lied about a movie that I've seen. I definitely Who's pressed play. Uh um, Makai. Okay. Cameron, I can't believe Cameron? that you've seen. You're you're getting somebody's giving you hints. I can I, see you who, reading. Who? Where? Like, like I'm not I, even... I don't, hey, Rachel. I don't believe anything that I've has been, to do with you in a movie. I've ever embarrassed again. myself enough on this podcast with movies. Believe me, I'm not lying about it. I had another. I had um, another Star Wars, Star Trek incident in an interview. I said to Christian Bell, I heard that you wanted to be a part of Star Wars. And then I said, the streets are saying Star Killer. And then I couldn't tell him who that was. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it though. It's part of your charm now. 
It was but like, I've never know, lied about a movie. I own it. But I have Raja seen- Binks. <laughs> That's uh, a star. A star in the a stars. Star born. Wars. <laughs> what, what was it? Star Wars story Lost through time. In time. <laughs> Lost. <laughs> Lost in time. <laughs> you know, like, like, I believed Star it Wars. when I said it too. I believed it. You're like Star Wars Lost in Time. And it's <laughs> it's just funny that in some kind of way that might be the movie that they should make. Because they haven't done any time traveling Star Wars. Starring Raja. Starring, yeah. Raja Binks. Raja Binks. Bring Raja Binks back. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Have fun at your Christmas party. Um, but on I think the it's other good side that you're doing the, nothing but oh sorry I think it's good that you're doing nothing you know take some me time take some time to get right before the new year that's what I did last new year I'll probably go on a private retreat again just by myself highly suggested just get away from everybody alright on the other side of this the big deal of the day which is some nigga shit happening in LA courtrooms between Tory Lanez Megan Thee Stallion and one of the most peculiar witnesses in the history of of law. Really? On the other side of this break. Okay. Are you familiar with what's going on in the Megan Thee Stallion trial? Van, Rachel. I am trying to keep Excuse up. Excuse me. Not the Megan Thee Stallion trial. The Tory Lane trial. Megan Thee Stallion You're is right. She's not, not on, on trial. trial. I apologize for that. Tory Lane's is on trial. Yes. Um, I am trying to keep up with what's going on. But there is so much back and forth, flip flopping up and down, side to side. I can't, I think I've got a grasp on what's happening. But even as we speak, I'm talking to my sorority sister slash fellow attorney. And we're even disagreeing about stuff that's happening. There's just so much information out there. And partly the reason that we're not getting the full story. There seems to be this game of telephone and like some people are saying this, some people are saying that, is because there's no cameras in the courtroom. So we have to rely on people in the courtroom reporting back to us what's happening. I, it's, it's a lot, Van. I don't think I was actually expecting this. I thought this would be a little bit more cut and dry based on the evidence that we had prior to trial. Here's the thing. We have to talk about something here. And we have to get people ready for something. Mm-hmm. We have to get ready for people ready for, particularly with the group of people that listen to our podcast, to get ready for people to start to come to terms with the fact that Tory Lanez could beat this. Now, the only reason why I say that is because the prosecution in my opinion at this point, the DA, they've had so many different curveballs thrown at them that it's interesting to see what a jury will do with the information that they've been given. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about it. Kelsey. The other woman in the car that night. Kelsey Harris. Kelsey Harris. The other woman in the car that night who was, uh, who was, uh, in an intimate relationship with with Tory Lanez, who's Meg's assistant, Meg's friend, we all know about this person. The whole internet is buzzing around the fact that she was called to testify. Mm-hmm. She was called to testify, and her testimony is straight up bewildering. It is absolutely bewildering. It's as if the prosecution had no idea what she was going to say of course because I don't they think didn't. that they did. She she was interviewed um, when this first happened. And during that interview, she said a couple of things. She said, number one, uh, that she had had a physical altercation with Tory Lanez. When she was asked about that on the stand, she said that that did not happen. Okay. Uh, number two, she was expected to testify that she saw Tory Lane shoot Meg the Stallion. She did not say that she saw Tory Lane shoot Meg the Stallion. She intimated that she wasn't even sure if Meg the Stallion was shot. They asked her if Meg the Stallion was shot, and she said her team told me that there was that she stepped on glass. She directly, directly 
contradicted not only what she told people, but text messages. There were text messages that she sent out to Meg after this thing going, like, should I go to her urgent care? My back, my side, my chest hurts from when Tory Lanez allegedly, according to her at that time, pulled her out of this truck by her hair. She now says that that never happened. It's, there's so much going on with her testimony and we should say that she's being cross-examined as we speak because this was not even in the cross-examination she was a prosecution witness and the prosecution had to out and out intimate that she had either been been intimidated or bribed into saying the things that she was saying okay so there's a guy who whose videos keep circulating on social media where he's reporting what's happening in the trial. And a lot of people are accusing him of being biased because when he, after Kelsey Harris's testimony yesterday, and it should be known that Talk she, about the lawyers for worker guy. Yes. And it should be known mm-hmm. that he is also, uh, that Kelsey Harris also took the stand today. We don't really have any update on what was said today. So by the time this podcast comes out, some of this information, um, there might be new information. So mm-hmm. he, people are accusing him of being biased because he said, I don't know, guys, but to me, Kelsey mm-hmm. Harris was extremely believable in everything that she was saying. All right. The guy's bias because I don't understand how you could say that after sitting in the courtroom when it has not been challenged. Like there, no one's challenging this, that Kelsey Harris back in September said a total had a totally different story than what she had today or yesterday on the stand, which is why the prosecution, the DA said flat out, what has changed since September and now? Because her story is totally different, which obviously is a perjury thing. And her response to that, Kelsey Harris, was that she's struggling with postpartum Mm -hmm. depression and a recent death in her family and her quote, mind isn't here right now. That is what she's staying, saying to her state of being as we speak as she's testifying in this trial. That's not why she's saying she her story changed, though. She said straight up she lied. She said there were some things I wasn't truthful about when she gave her statement. She so she so she's not saying that the things that then what did the, she say that in response changed. to? <clears throat> she was asked. She was she said straight up she goes, she told a prosecutor trying to convict Lanes of assault that she made statements that weren't accurate yes. in a recorded September interview partly played for the jury some of the things there were some things i wasn't truthful about yes she said okay um she 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 was asked about situations she clearly has an axe to grind with megan she says i'm neutral i moved on with my life but uh she says that megan the stallion spread false rumors that she took hush money so she sounds upset at megan let's remember this is her former best friend Okay, they're not friends anymore. She also learned that Megan had a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez after Megan had introduced her to Tory Lanez. So there's, and, and she testifies that they were arguing. I think Megan even said it too. They were all arguing. They were screaming. They were yelling at each other in this car. It got really heated. They were, you know, throwing insults and then cursing each other out, all of this stuff. But my thing with Kelsey Harris is that you have completely changed your testimony. And when you were pressed as to why, what has happened so from now, why are you saying you lied? She said, because she's she has suffered from postpartum, a death in the family, and she she said that she doesn't want to, she also said she her mind isn't right right now. She further on goes to say, I don't want to be here right now. She kept saying, I don't want to be here. I don't want to testify. So to Meg me- Meg said the same thing when she was on there. Okay, fine. She said, I don't want to be doing this. Yeah. And Meg and Meg spoke to her emotional state as well and the things that she's gone to as to why she was a Sure, testifying. so both women did but that. But my yeah. point is that Kelsey Harris is not a believable witness at this point. I don't know how the jury- To talk about, to, to your point about Tori getting off and, 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 and all of that, that's absolutely a huge possibility because all the defense has to create is reasonable doubt. And Kelsey Harris's testimony does that. But in my opinion, Kelsey Harris is not a credible witness because she has flip flop on her testimony, cle- like black and white in what she said in yeah. September versus not, now, not, which may- And not just her testimony, but other things, a text message, help. 
Toy Shop Meg. Five minutes after. Five minutes after. And then it she happened. says, then she now she now says, I didn't see him do that. I told you that. I didn't see him do that. I didn't see him do that. Um, uh, she also said in the September interview that she told Tory Lanez, who had threatened her life, she says, All right, if you shoot me, you shoot me. I guess it's my time to go. She says, um, that never happened now. Uh, they played the tapes of her testimony, of her uh of her interview to try to convince to refresh her memory, and she's just she's stonewalled. She seemed what people are saying, she seemed out of her body somewhere else. Um and it's weird because Wait, to clarify, she was out of her body in the courtroom or when she was doing that courtroom. interview? Okay. In the courtroom. Um what's weird about it is that the defense's theory is that it wasn't Tory Lanez who shot Meg, that it was Kelsey. Right. That is what the defense is positing. They're saying that. That was that was in their opening statement. They're saying she did it. It just doesn't, nothing makes sense. It's just she was asked about whether or not Tory Lanez threatened to shoot her. And she asked, do I have to answer that question? And then she invoked the Fifth Amendment on it. I know, it was weird. She invoked her Fifth Amendment privilege. After she has immunity, by the way. After she has immunity about answering a question about somebody else's criminality. It seems to me, and I'm not, it seems to me that Kelsey Harris is confused about what she's supposed to say. It, 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 I, look, you guys, I'm, look, I, I, I'm I being, agree. I, I'm being straight up that I think this is bad for Meg's case. I think if you don't See? have Kelsey, yeah, okay. You don't think so? No, no, I want you to finish your thought because I, I agree with you. She does seem confused on it. And the fact that her story has now changed not in Megan's favor, it does seem like some of the accusations that she claims Meg lied about her, lied on about her, seem to be a little bit true because the current testimony that she's gi gi giving favors Tori. And the fact that you're saying, I don't, you know, you, he did threaten you. Now you're saying he didn't threaten you. I'm sorry. It's, it's in, it's in Tory's favor. The DA has also asked, also asked Kelsey about Tory Lanez allegedly offering her $1 million not to testify against her. Mm -hmm. Kelsey, at some point did Tory try to bribe you? She goes, mm. she goes, not just me. She said, then she goes, who else did Tory Lanez try to bribe? She goes, I wouldn't say bribe. She, she was, then they asked her again. He's like, uh, it wasn't about not saying anything. No, but it was mentioned. He mentioned a million dollars. I guess it was just about the case. She, she admitted that he offered her a million dollars. Right, right, right. What the fuck is going on? Like, what's going like, on? If I what? was a juror, and I also should say this. My sorority sister brought this to my attention. Apparently, the what was played was was told to be disregarded to the jury. Apparently, the prior interview that happened in September with Kelsey Harris, the jury can't consider that. No. So listen, yeah, it's very interesting. I Which wonder I don't about know this. Why a judge would take that out? So I, I wonder about this. They weren't playing it to admit it as evidence. They were playing it to refresh her memory. So the judge reminded the jury that yeah. this is not that this is not evidence that we're playing this to refresh her memory from a legal aspect. What's the deal with that? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Jurors are human beings. And we put a lot of faith in the hands of jurors. They are not lawyers. They are not experienced with trial and the rules of evidence. Let me tell you something. I'm a I'm an attorney. And that hearing that recording would have an effect on me. The jury does not have to write in their in their instruction when when they decide whatever with this case that, well, based on the recording that I heard in September, I decided this. They don't have to say that. They just hmm. have to write guilty. Hmm. They don't have to so say you why. Think that it's gonna, you think Absolutely. that it's going to. Absolutely. It's all we're all talking about. Is it not what you're talking? They like technically they can't talk about that when they're deliberating, but you can't tell me they're not thinking about it. We're all talking, comparing September to this. And the prosecutor herself said, what has changed between September and now? And that question was not dis, um, 
that question was not, you know, they weren't told that, that the questioning line of questioning was not sustained, I should say. So there's some updates here. Okay. Oh. We heard from a city of Los Angeles crime analyst who works with the LAPD and analyzed gunshot residue. Says the gunshot residue was on Tory and Kelsey, but not on Tory's driver. We also saw an Instagram comment from Tory's account, September 22, um, in which the account replied, this is from Tory's Instagram account, which the account pl- uh, replied, that's not true, to someone commenting that people are saying that Kelsey shot Meg. So apparently there was an there was something that came from Tory Lanz's Instagram that says uh, Tory did that Kelsey did not shoot Meg, saying that that's not true. But the driver didn't have any gunshot residue on him. I'll ask you, as a legal eagle, if in fact Kelsey is not, and this this assumes that you have enough information about all the evidence in the case and stuff like that which we really don't because there's not as much information out there we're getting essentially court trans- court transcripts via twitter if you don't have kelsey's testimony to be an eyeball witness to tory firing a gun at meg and you have meg with gunshot fragments in her foot you have both tory and kelsey with gunshot residue on them you have testimony coming that from people who are going to say that they heard gunshots, you have mm-hmm. a doctor saying that they removed gunshot fragments. So Meg mm-hmm. was shot. We do know that. Mm-hmm. So the idea that there was no shooting is out. Somebody right. in that car shot out of that car and shot Meg the Stallion. Right. Kelsey saying she did not see Tori do it. And she said she did not shoot. And she's saying she did not shoot. The driver... Where has not he? even been like has not even been brought up in any of this. Okay? And he's Tory's um, driver, to be clear. And he's Tory's driver. So what would you convict Tory Lanes on? Like what evidence do you have? I'm asking, what evidence do you have well, to convict Tory Lanes on? There is circumstantial if, evidence based off everything that you just said. We know she was shot. You have Meg saying it was Tory. You have Kelsey saying, I didn't see, but it wasn't me. Well, we know Megan didn't shoot herself. There's not even gun residue on her. So circumstantial evidence, which you can win a case on, points to Tori. So when people are like, Tori's going to get off, I think you're underestimating what a jury can deduce from what's been shown to them Hmm. at the end of the day. And we're not in there hearing every single thing that's been said. Okay, let's let's argue the other side of it while you're giving me that. Let's argue that. What are you seeing? If you're a juror, what has been shown to you that is causing reasonable doubt that Tori wasn't the shooter? Short of there being some type of ghost or some person that nobody wants to admit to being there, how did a shot get fired off into Megan's foot? What is the reasonable doubt that it is somebody else other than Tori? Hmm. I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't you know. You proved the like, case to me and what you just said. Now we maybe we should have a criminal defense attorney on here to maybe maybe is seeing something that we don't see. Obviously, we're the not. Next in time courtroom. we talk about this, I want to be talking about a verdict. I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> the next, like the the the, the, the next it's time we discuss fast. this, it is moving for fast. The next time we discuss this, I want to be talking about a verdict. And I want like, to get one I, of the jurors on here. One of the jurors. Yeah, I want to know what was happening in that room. They talk. Can you you can do that like after? I guess you can. I saw I saw the OJ Drew talk about. Whoa, we didn't know. We thought oh, what's going on. Oh, <laughs> talk, we love him. After cross examination, Deputy DA uh, asked Kelsey more questions. Kathy Ta asked Kelsey more questions. Um, in redirect, displaying the the te- three texts Kelsey sent at four twenty seven a.m. that said, "Help, toy shot Meg." Court I mean, just a lot. Court just uh, got out for the day. It's uh, it's crazy. I mean, I'm more inclined to believe the actions of somebody 
right after something happened than when they That's had the time to think about it and everything that's, else that followed. That text that's the question. to me, which was admissible in court, is the most damning thing, that I, at least that I've seen, because I know there's more evidence, that's the most damning piece of evidence to me, is that text message. That, yeah. That's, and why that's isn't the, the messenger, the person who was on the, a manager, the person who was on the receiving end of that text message? I want to hear from them. The question is, do you believe Kelsey in 2020 or do you believe Kelsey in 2022? Afterwards, Kelsey directly implicated Torsi, Torsi, directly implicated Tory Lanes in the shooting of Meg Thee Stallion. Now, she's totally backed off that. And can I just She's basically she's basically said my name is Bennett and I ain't in it. She also said in court today that she never heard anybody say dance bitch which Meg the Stallion testified to um under oath. One thing I want to ask you. Meg lied to to Gail King. She did. And I understand why. Talk to me. She lied to Gail King and said that she was not intimate or that she had any sexual relationship with Tory Lanez. And I'm not saying I agree with the lying, but I understand the thought process behind it. Megan the Stallion knew that if she said that I had a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez, that is all people would see. They would slut shame her, which they're doing right now. And they would focus on the fact that she was intimate with this person. And that would be the storyline rather than the fact that she was shot. And I'm not, I, I don't think that that helps her case at all. But when it comes to black women and how we are portrayed in the media and, and just within public opinion in general and the what history has shown us people would have crucified Megan the Stallion if she slept with him. They would have said, see, 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 and they would have been on the side of Tory. So I understand the reasoning behind it, even though I don't necessarily agree with lying because it does, lying is going to hurt you at the end of the day when it comes to anything. But I get it. And that's a conversation that we need to keep talking about because Megan was shot, period. And that's all we should be focusing on. All the mess and the gossip of who slept with who and whose house they were at. And them are all of that comes second to the fact that this black woman was injured. And the fact that people want to put that to the side and focus on something else is extremely problematic for me. And this, and this happens with black women. Gentle pushback. Come on. The gentlest of pushback. Come on. Meg the Stallion, Meg the Stallion was shot. She's definitely shot, right? We know that. That's the one truth that has come out in all of this. Something that, by the way, was debated. It was debated whether or not she was shot. Correct. If she was shot, which we know she was shot, the questions that are left are the who and the why. Mm -hmm. If Meg the Stallion was married to Tory Lanez and she come up missing or something happened to her, the first person that would be investigated would be the husband or the spouse or the first person that you question that you bring in is somebody who you know has a close relationship with her. I don't think it's unfair at all after something like this has happened and you're trying to make sense out of what happened that night, why emotions ran so high, why you up and leave a party, while people are fighting in the car, why all of these things are going on. I don't think it's unfair to ask the question, well, what was the nature of the relationship I don't between think so. you people? Right. So if that question, I don't think that that question, I mean, sure, there are going to be people out there that are going to use her sex life to slut shame her. I don't think that Gail King is one of them. 
Didn't so, matter. It's who was receiving I, it. I, I, I understand. But what I'm talking about is if the question, if it's a fair question, I think it deserved a fair answer. Oh. And I think it... And I think it looks bad that she lied about it. No, no, no. What's bad is that she can't answer that question truthfully because she knows what will be on the back end yeah. of that. That's what's I understand sad. that. But but this is not an this is not like an art this is not a uh, this is not an interview. This is not like an interview with like this isn't an interview like Jay-Z and Beyonce at the beginning of their life where people are like, Oh, are you guys dating? This is not that type of interview. This is an interview about like someone shooting somebody else and you have an entire group of people and a whole group of people who have trusted what Meg has said, who have trusted like everything that she said and have chosen to believe her. I'm not saying that this, I'm not saying that this like takes away from anything that she said. It was disappointing that she lied though. And not only did she lie, she lied kind of flippantly. She's like, like, no, of course like, she did. And, and and she she like kind of so the only thing that I'm the only thing that I'm saying about that is like I, all everything that you're saying about how people feel about things is true but it's a lot of people that chose to to but to believe her it did and sway believe me. her still I'm not it, sure I'm not saying that it did but I'm just saying that it didn't it, make it me distrust me her it didn't make me distrust her because I understand why she did it again I don't necessarily agree with the line because there's going to be fallout from it and when she was on court and under oath, she told the truth. She said that they had a relationship. She could have continued with that and then Kelsey could have been like, that wasn't true, it was this. She told the truth under oath. I understand why, honestly, she probably should have I'll, never under, done that interview with Gail. She should have never done oath, it. Under oath, she had no choice but to tell the truth. That's not true, she could have lied. I guarantee you that Tory Lanez has evidence that he slept with Meg Thee Stallion. Maybe he, maybe he does. I guarantee but, but you. But can I just say this? That he too? has evidence that he slept with Meg Thee Stallion. I, there's, she was. She, they should no choice but to tell the truth under that's oath. Fi- that's that's fine. But the point is, she did. I there's been so much that has happened that I don't have the timeline correctly. But if I recall, immediately after this, Tory Lanez was talking about the fact of how he was fucking her before she did the Gail King interview. Yeah. He was talking he about, about it. He, he, he talked about it. He talked about it on the so, show. So, exactly. And he was talking about her in a certain way. And he was talking about fucking her. And people were responding to that in an extremely negative way. So, even more so, why I understand why she got up there and was like, I'm not about to play into that. Because I know it's going to play into the way people judge me and respond to me. They're going to judge me for the sexual decisions that I make rather than the fact that I am the victim and I was injured in this. And that is so sad because we only do that with, not only, but we mostly do that with black women. And I understand the predicament that she was in in that point. She should be able to, I saw the tweets, she should be able to have sex with whoever she wants to, how many people she wants to, and it shouldn't be something that's prosecuted in this case or even in the court of public opinion but it is and the part of the reason that it is being pro- it is is because Tory Lanez made it an issue of like oh yeah, she just not, mad <laughs> she just mad no he did he was like oh they're just I know, mad I, know I was he fucking did, but, them both oh I was fucking but, but, them both but, but and that's everybody's the reason, like oh but, but, but that's, that's the, she, that might I, I know but that might be the reason why they're fighting like that's it, 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 it I understand is what you're the saying reason. the sex lives of the, the sex lives of these three people are material to what happened that night. It's not just a lot of times this stuff but that's is just not how salacious. He was using it. He was using he it was, to get people on his side. All oh, these bitches are just mad because I was fucking them both. And that's you. Right. You shot her. I, 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 so this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that what he's saying. Okay, put you like this: Tory Lane shooting Meg the Stallion has nothing to do with Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion's sex life. Totally agree. But it might be it, it might be the reason why they were fighting. I'm not saying I don't understand a lot, but in that situation where so many people had like where where so many people had chosen to believe and with so many people and still believe. I still think Tory Lane shot Meg Thee Stallion. But it is going to be look at him. Look at Brownie. It is going to be it's just d- difficult moving forward with all of this story changing, all of this, this happened, then this happened. That when Meg got on the stand, Meg was saying there was mad shit she couldn't remember. I know it was a long time ago, but. And they were under the influence. I, 
I don't need people to remember the shit that they said then. Play it back for them and like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So fuck. Shit is crazy. I get what you're saying though. I understand. Um, It's just, I just know that that's going to be something that people are going to use to say, hey, she's lying. Course, you can't trust anything she said. She lied to me. Of course. By the way, why were y'all so mad then when, when Jesse fucking told Robin <laughs> Roberts, when Jesse told Robin Roberts that everybody was like, I can't believe you lied to Robin Roberts. I can't believe you lied. Whatever, man. What a bunch of mess. What a bunch of mess. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, you okay? Everybody was worried about you. Yeah, look at him. Perfect bite size for P22. Oh, that is... Cover your ears. Cover your ears. That is the worst thing that you could say. He looks like a finger food for P22 right there. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, he looks tired. He was sedated, wasn't he? No. I see why you like a fox. You basically living with one. He looks like a fox. They sedated my little nigga. Look at him right there. You want to know who just came back from... From the spa, from the pet spa. Hold on, real the quick. pet spa. He's living the life over there, isn't he? You remember your friend, Bozeman. You Luke remember your friend tried to buy Bozeman. His legs. Come here, Bozeman. Now, look, come here, boy. Yeah, <laughs> look who just came Bozeman. back from the pet spa. You had a whole <laughs> look. You got your him? little scarf on, Bozeman. From the pet spa. This back. Look, look. Bozeman, get, get, come here. Get up here, boy. Come on. You remember? Oh, you're tired. Well, you're well, tired. of course he's tired. He had a whole full day of relaxation. Get up here. Look. Bozeman. Look. Remember your Bozeman, friend, look. Brownie? Remember Bozeman? Look at that Bozeman? little hors d'oeuvre for P22. Oh, my God. All right. Get out of here. <laughs> here. All right. Can get down? Mo- moving on. Do you like Joe Biden? Do you like him? I don't have a pro- the problems with Joe Biden that you have. That's not true. See, why I got to... <laughs> oh, by the way, after this, we're going to have Glasses Malone on to talk about the gunner situation. You don't have the problem. What are my problems with Joe Biden? Why don't you tell me? Well, I mean, you were the one who was like, did I vote for him? I don't know. Listen, it was the lesser of two evils. We, we made a decision. Right now, I'm riding with Biden as he's in the presidency. And... He did something great. Would you like to talk about it? Because I feel like it I, I can, res- I can uh, breathe a, a sigh of relief. Take it. Take it. Well, Take I it. can. Take it away. Oh, By the way, God. I didn't vote for the. It wasn't. It wasn't the lesser of two evils. It was a clear platform that all of a lot of Black Americans voted for. A clear platform and a vision that had to do with reform, mm-hmm. with restorative justice, and with uh and with the Build Back Better rejuvenation of America's workers. So it wasn't the lesser of two evils. I think that a lot of people that say it was the lesser of two evils in 2020 are taking a shallow look at that there was a path for America that Trump had the country on. And a lot of people looked at that as destructive, no doubt. But there were a lot of people who saw rampant, unchecked police violence. A lot of people who saw... um Voting rights being taken away from them. And a lot of people who saw other systemic issues. That's okay. I'm gonna keep going. A lot of other systemic issues and they voted for their interests. So there you go. But talk about what you talk about what Joe Biden did. You've been hard on him too. Don't just try to make it me. I have been hard on Joe Biden, which is when I talk about the lesser of two evils, I mean, we had to have hope that Joe Biden would actually act on some of the things that he was promising specifically to the black community. And his past record didn't necessarily say that that's something that he was going to do. That's why I say that. But Biden did something that personally affects me. He signed a historic bill codifying same sex and interracial marriage. He signed this on Tuesday, the legislation to safeguard marriage equality after Congress for the first time in history approved federal protections for same sex, same sex marriage, which is great because we all know that the fact that, women's rights have been stomped upon here in 2022. Uh, It started to question, especially after what Clarence Thomas wrote, that maybe other rights would be taken away, including same-sex marriage and possibly interracial marriage, despite the fact that Thomas is in an interracial marriage. So they passed the Respect for Marriage Act on Thursday in a 258 to 169 uh, and I guess one person abstained from the voting. Who were the 169 people 
<laughs> who said no to same sex and interracial marriage? What? <sighs> Van, go ahead. You were saying something. I interrupted you. So here's so here's the deal. Uh, I think this is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it shows that the Democrats have learned lessons from the huh. Dobbs decision. Uh. And they've learned lessons that, you know, in order to protect something, you must ensure it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you codify things mm. in order to make sure that they exist in perpetuity. Mm. You must ensure it to protect it. Which I'm sure yeah. they knew that they could do this prior. Well, I don't think that it was, I'm sure that they knew that they could do it, but we've seen opportunities for them to prioritize it that have been sort of it's a very careful, cavalierly put on the back burner for other Absolutely. things. Look, when Obama had the chance to codify Roe, he made that portion of his presidency about the Affordable Care Act. That's just a fact. Obama chose, and what he chose when he had his supermajority was the Affordable Care Act. I am not going to say that he couldn't have done more because he obviously should have done more and has left... Uh, this generation of politicians and this generation of Democrats with a prodigious task in order to protect the reproductive freedom of so many of our women. Okay. Let me tell you what I wish would have happened. I wish they would have gone one for two on this. I wish they would have codified same sex marriage and left interracial marriage. Just, just let make y'all sweat a little bit. You know what I mean? Why? Make you sweat. Why? Listen, I just want you and I just, I want you and Brian to be looking over your shoulder and red Robin. Just you never know who's gonna come get you, you know? Wouldn't isn't that fun? Isn't that more fun is for it, you guys? Isn't is that it, more fun for you, you and you and Brian to be in the cheesecake factory and never why knowing? Why you keep if putting like, us in these restaurants that we don't eat in? That's where y'all go. I don't even know where a cheesecake factory is here. And that's no shit, no, I love the brand. Shit. I don't I actually. Oh shit! You mean to tell me you don't know it's a cheesecake factory in the Grove? There's you a cheesecake know. factory in the Grove. <laughs> the only restaurant I know in the Grove is the one that Italian place that's directly across from where the tree is right now. I have okay, no, so do you know where is there a cheesecake? Know, I'm literally stuck. You know what a like, movie? You know what a movie theater yes, is? Yes, the I've Grove? been several times. It's a fucking cheesecake factory right next door to the movie theater. It must. It must be on the right side of it. It's on the right side. Yeah. Okay. See, so I don't you, go that far because I come from the other way. I literally wait. have never. I honestly, I probably would have stopped never inside been that, of it. You've never been that deep into the Grove? You just I go to the Grove. I honestly would have stopped So you go to Grove inside. Circle and then you come back Next out. Next time, I probably will stop inside the Cheesecake Factory. I truly but didn't I just, know that was there. I think that it would be dope if you and... Um, Is it? If you and Brian just had to kind of like, you know... What if as I, a black man, you had to constantly look over your shoulder? And I don't say you already do. I'm saying that there's a... Say, I'm saying that there's some type what, of nigga? law. I'm saying huh? that there's a law. I know, well, you're, I know what you were going to say. If I'm in Beverly Hills, I got to look over my shoulder. I know what if you're going to say. Rooms, I gotta look over I'm my, saying I'm like, huh? if there was some type yeah, of law... Welcome to my world. I'm saying right. there's some type of law. Stop. Don't do us... Yeah. Don't, don't do just, us like just think, that. Just think about it. I want to no, I want to make an alternate history movie called... Uh, <laughs> Painted love, what? where they outlaw interracial marriage, and Man, then that's people... existed. What are you talking about? No, but look, alternate future. Like, I want to make a movie called Painted Love. Think about this: Painted Love, where they outlaw this is interracial so marriage. Racist. Where they outlaw <laughs> interracial marriage, right? And so then people have to have like surgical blackface to be with the people that they love. It's called Painted Love. That's this the is the darkest so thing it. I think I've ever heard you say. Painted love. So think about it. You you go no. and you have like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? And Leonardo DiCaprio and Zoe Saldana. Donnie tagging you in. And Le <laughs> <laughs> I will not do this. Okay, okay, Rachel's out. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, like like this is dark. Guys. This is dark. Okay. No, you guys don't want to. Donnie, would you go see Painted Love? Yeah. Yeah. I can't say. I, I, I would, but you would have to recast it. I, who Leon, who would you want to see? Cameo, but somebody Donnie. that's not Zoe Saldana. Somebody darker skinned. Okay. This okay. is <laughs> Donnie. So, Donnie, they're going to turn okay. on you for saying that. Donnie, okay. you might have you might have finally <laughs> no, triggered no, no. the soulless no, jackals. I don't think they will. They I don't think they will. <laughs> they agree. We go we go darker. We go like well, we Donnie, go darker. Fine. Leonardo DiCaprio. You really want to trigger? Them? No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Let love. Donnie name. Let Donnie name the darker skin black woman that he referred to. Let them the, really Donnie, turn on darker you. Darker skin black woman. Go ahead, woman. Donnie. Who you going to go with, Donnie? Issa Rae is a good one. 
Um, you okay. I will go with uh, the actress from Queen and Slim, whose name I can't remember. Jodie Turner Smith. Yep, her. Painted, um, painted love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, painted painted love. love. And then the trailer would be like a slow mo version of Tainted Love, and Tiny. it's perfect. Sometimes what? I feel I have to, and it and it would be and it would be Leo undergoing Tiny. the surgical blackface, Tiny. and then. What happened to you? And then you? it would be Leo. And then, and then but, but here's the thing. Ashley. And, and Ashley. Painted Love, <laughs> and Painted Love, let me finish real quick, because you might, in Painted Love, Leo has to go on a mission <laughs> to overturn this, and then he'll go back to being white. So he goes back to being white at the end of the movie. This could be Leo's blackface movie. They all do it. Anyway, um, I'm glad that they, I'm glad that they got a fight. <laughs> Wow. You. Who knew who knew <laughs> that this is where the conversation would go? Thank God. We know which well, Van would Van would have been in the 169 just to get painted love out there. Hmm. Painted love. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make that shit. Watch. Can you, can you believe it'll the trailer? be self it'll be self-produced. <laughs> I know Lena Waithe will make that shit. Oh no, not Lena. Not Lena. Kenya. Kenya oh, will do that, bitch. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenya, me, no, Kenya it's can negative. make it's negative. Me and Kenya can make Painted Love. It's negative. We, me, we could do, Netflix would love paint, Painted Love is the type of movie <laughs> that so wins at the Oscars. Painted Love. Whatever, man. Even All the right. title is just terrible. <laughs> it's a good title. All right. Um, we're laughing. We're having a good time. Uh, I love my family here at Higher Learning. I love Rachel. Uh, I love Donnie. I'm going to like Ashley, even though she's problematic in many different ways with her music tastes. Um, and the reason why I say that is because people might take the laughter that we're all exhibiting right now as not a state of how we're feeling right now, but a state of how we're feeling overall. And that would be a mistake. When people appear happy and content, they are not always that way. Uh, it's a, it's amazing when people let you into their laughter, but it's profound when they let you into their struggle. And there's a brother uh, that passed away that I don't think let as many people into his struggle as, uh, as he did his laughter. And I'm not in any way judging him for that, but I'm just saying the amount of shock that reverberated across you know, this town, America, the world, at the death of Stephen Twitch Boss, who died at 40. You guys probably know Twitch. Most of the people here in the town know Twitch. Uh, he was on the Ellen Show. Um, Ellen's DJ. And was just a uh, living, breathing ball of happiness. Or so it seemed, he took his own life. His wife, uh, Allison Boss, confirmed his death in a statement. His death was shocking enough, but the fact that he had taken his life is just another heart-wrenching, gutting blow uh, to add to the ones that we've experienced over the last couple of years. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to tell people to do. It was just destructive sucked yeah uh, i want to take the time to just send my condolences and talk about the fact that we're fucking going through it and we don't know what to do mm. and i think it's uh it's human nature for people to want to speculate and make certain assumptions and i'll just say the only thing that we need to thinking about right now is in regards to this is his family. He had a wife, he had three children. Um, he was a son, he was a friend, he had coworkers, and he is someone along with his wife and his entire family who spread so much joy and love and laughter, especially during the pandemic when people were stuck in their homes. They were a group of people that you could turn to just to find something positive through your day. And he gave that to us 
despite whatever it was that he was struggling with. So, you know, the only thing I can say is keep his family in your thoughts because you can't, I can't even imagine what they're going through and what they'll continue to go through because it's not something that it just goes away. So it'll just be with them. And so I just, my heart is with them. So I, I can't stop thinking about his family. I can't stop thinking about them. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. All right. So we got to go to the streets real quick. Um, <clears throat> Where obviously we've talked about the Tory Lanes and Meg the Stallion trial, but that's not street enough for glasses. Um, <laughs> high learning audiences, favorite guest of all time, Glasses Malone is back because we got to talk about some street shit. And me and Rachel don't really. I mean, I don't know. I'm 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 not street. I'm just not like I'm from South Baton Rouge. I'm not street. Rachel, you street your dad as a judge, so I would imagine that you're not. I'm I am not. I am not. <laughs> so this is the question that we have to ask Glasses Malone. Gunner has been released from jail. Everybody knows that YSL has been um the target of a RICO indictment there in Georgia, a state RICO indictment. So members of the YSL record label, I'm saying record label, were all indicted together. Young Thug as the head. A lot of people got put in jail. Gunna has been released. There is now this video of Gunna who pled guilty and got a suspended sentence of him making this statement in court as it regards to himself, to YSL, and basically that includes Young Thug and Walter Murphy. Uh, Donnie, play this. Please state after each statement whether or not you agree or acknowledge that statements are true, okay? Yes, ma'am. I became affiliated with YSL around 2016. Is that true as it pertains to you, Mr. Kitchens? Yes, ma'am. YSL is a music label and a game, and you have personal knowledge that members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in furtherance of the game. Yes, ma'am. You were present when law enforcement officers stopped a vehicle in which you were present along with Jeffrey Williams, wherein hydrocodone, methamphetamines, and a firearm were recovered. These items did not belong to you. Yes, ma'am. And do you acknowledge the following statement? I recognize, accept, and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered why I sell the game to the detriment of my community. Okay, as soon as this video was made public, the, the news that Gunna was being released actually came out yesterday, but as soon as this news is made public of Gunna doing what, something that's called an allocution, which happens when you when you plea out to something, um, as part of an Alfred plea, which I had to look up, people started asking the question, the question of the streets, drum roll, dun, 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 dun. did Gunna snitch? We've been talking about this in the group text all morning. Glasses Malone being someone who may or may not have been tied to certain organizations. I'm not going to say I don't want to snitch myself. <laughs> Glasses. Did Gunna snitch? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> While I so this is the statement he made when he got released from jail. The first statement. When I became affiliated with YSL in 2016, I did not consider it a gang. More like a group of people from Metro Atlanta who had common interests and in artistic aspirations. My focus of YSL was entertainment. Rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorify urban life in the Black community. While I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements. Donnie, if you play the last question a lady asked, she said, do you recognize this statement? And she went forward and explained his statement that turned YSL into a gang and said it must be stopped. It must be ended. 
it's not even deep. Right. Okay. Now, so why, why, so being that that's the case, why do you think people are saying, first of all, Rachel, do you think Gunnar snitched? Yes. <laughs> it's not <laughs> even like deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I didn't know that. Why is I that mean, so funny to me? <laughs> I don't know why it's funny, but I mean, He's getting the charges that were. I don't know what the charges were that were initially against him, but I remember when we first talked about it on this podcast, and we were like, "The racketeering charge." There, but I mean, like, what, what, how many years they were facing? I don't even know if it got to that point, but I remember us talking about it. We were like, "Man, they are really in some trouble," and all of a sudden, you're sentenced to five years. You get time served for the one year that you're in prison. There's no way to me that you. You got off that way. He did an Alfred plea, right? Am I getting that right, Donnie? He did an Alfred plea. He did an Alfred plea. He had to have said something. He had, and I mean, just the statement that we listened to, he does. But there's no way that you came from up here down to that and you're going home and you're getting time served for what you did and you had a RICO charge, even if it is state, you said something. And and you you heard the statement. So the, yeah. the the statement to you, Glasses, is tantamount to snitching. Why do you feel like there's so much back and forth on the internet? If it's that cut and dry to you, a street nigga. If it's that cut and dry to you, then why do you think it's so much people going back and forth on the internet about why gonna snitch? 600 Breezy say gonna ain't snitch. Uh, um, Thug's sister has said that she, she does, doesn't she want a, you calling her calling him snitch she doesn't so, like want people calling him a snitch she doesn't think that that's fair to throw that word around is what she's saying so this is the problem people f- have a it, like they want to be emotionally connected to their concept of a snitch so what could have happened is all the ysl guys could have came together and said hey we're going to take a plea Maybe okay. Gunna gets what five if that years. happened? What if what if Thug knows what Gunner's doing? What if everybody said we're it's gonna still, all plea it's, out? It's still snitching. The the important part about when you're taking a plea and you allocute, you have to be really careful what you make courtrooms hear you say. And the reason he felt so comfortable to release this initial statement that I read is because if you look at the person who recorded his allocution, you know what I mean? They were sneaking to record it. He didn't know that video existed. So when you hear him, so he he made this statement. First off, you lie. If you make a statement that's snitching in the streets, if you make any statement of incrimination, anything, if if their whole defense was, we're not a gang, we're a record label. And you say, no, they're a gang. And he say, we're a gang, they're a gang. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let's say you are in the streets and you're in the streets, you're deep in the streets, you're a gangster. Mm-hmm. Not even with the A, with the E-R, a gangster. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And your niece gets kidnapped. And you saw a dude driving a white van around the neighborhood. You saw the license plate and all of that stuff. Your niece gets kidnapped. It's probably that guy. Cops come to you and they ask you, do you have any, do you have any statement to make about anything that's been going on with your niece around this. If you make a statement to the cops, are you snitching? Yes. Glasses, that's fucking idiotic, dog. Not at all. Define define (laughs) snitching. Define what snitching is. Okay. So snitching is a code amongst criminals when you're committing a crime. Two people that are crimes, right? So if you tell on crimes as a criminal, in theory, you are a snitch. The reality is, is when you tell a when you tell on someone, right, and you're trying to avoid punishment for your own crime or reduce sentence for your own crime, snitching. That's not the question I just asked, though. Well, you the said define just, snitching. <laughs> okay, oh, define snitching. Okay, define snitching. Okay, okay. So now but, back to the point. I don't need the police to track down no license. I can tra- I can literally get the same information that the police can. I wanna. You don't think I can get your address? I I can get you. Can I get believe my, you. You can get my address, <laughs> but I'm telling you that you don't have the investigative tools that the cops have. I'm not disagreeing. If you yeah. ask me if I gave them particularly a license plate number, I, I don't need to get them. I can get the address myself. Once I get the address myself, I'm gonna go pay that visit. 
So you're telling me that like a lot of the street guys are also detectives, like they're like Sherlock Holmes because they solve. It's crimes. a little bit of investigating. Sometimes you got to get to the bottom of stuff. All right, back to Gunner real quick. I mean, man, the police is nothing but a job. It ain't like they went to school for a thousand years. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 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 like they got. It ain't like they. I will say, look, I, I know, but they got. Right. It's I'm, not rocket dude, science. Dude, I get you. Honest, he's right. I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, I don't, be, don't, we, we complain about the police going to school for six weeks and then they just solve yeah, all the crimes. Yeah, I've been involved. You know, they got tactics and all of that stuff. Back to Gunner, though. Back to Gunner. Okay. Um. Gunna uh, being a snitch has the whole internet on fire. Everybody's talking about it. Why the fuck do we care? Who fucking I don't cares? Know. I don't Good know. Glasses. Who cares if Gunna is a snitch? Do you care know. if Gunna is a snitch? No, because I would never do a crime with Gunna. Ever. <laughs> All, him being a snitch now just means I wouldn't talk with him. Like, about anything outside of simple business. If you say, hey, Glasses, man, what's your opinion on music? Oh, man, this is my opinion. But I would never conduct crime with him, and I would never befriend him. Because would you do you a don't song be with Counter? Would you do a song with Gunner? No, no, you wouldn't do a song before, with Gunner. before before yeah. this. Would you have done one with him? Mm, I, it would have to be the perfect song, but no, not now. Because he's a snitch, you would never do a song with Gunner. Mm -mm. Do you put Gunner on the same level as you put, like, say, Six Nine? Mm, they're both snitch, but it's different. They're both snitches, but it's different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I wouldn't. So a snitch is not a snitch is not a snitch is not a snitch then. They're oh, yeah, yeah. They all snitches. snitches. They all told. <laughs> but 6 9 has a special extra place of hate in my heart. You know what I mean? The con People who actually. <laughs> okay. The thing that bothers me the most about Gunner is not. Like, Gunner could have been a good guy, you know, the whole time. He, you know, he, he's, he postures himself as a crip, right? So he says he's a crip. So this means you do not make statements. He knows it like I know it. Right. So that's one thing. But he also released that initial statement. You know what I mean? Saying I didn't make statements. You just lied to me. Now I actually believed you. I was like, oh, you know what? You thugged it out and, you know, you got a deal. No. Then they play your statement on video. And then they actually said, this is your statement. Do you recognize the statement? Like, yes, ma'am. He recognized the statement he made that incriminated other people. Six nine is somebody that's like Satan. You know, it's it, it literally for confusion and to cause dissension amongst mankind. <laughs> Jesus. I, <laughs> I love that definition. Yeah. Um, I think that people care so much because of what you just said. See, to me, I don't really care either at all. I really want a fan of Gunna before. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Gunna music dope. That's fine. That's your opinion. I said it, it doesn't really resonate with me. It's not for me. But... What I care about and what's the most interesting part of all of this to me is that you tried to get out in front of it with a lie and then this recording comes out. Now I care. Now I'm interested because now I'm like, well, why Why did you lie? You lied because you knew you snatched. I would and then glasses. You have, I never no, thought, I, never these, thought I would on, say brother. this, but I would glasses. You have this. all of these people that's like, he didn't, he didn't make a statement. I'm like, bro, it's on tape. He said, this is my statement. Don't don't we as a black community have to stop caring about who snitched? Mm -mm, mm -mm. So yes, don't, as a, don't as a we black care because he lied. As a black community, don't we have to don't we have to stop caring? Who gives a this is criminal stuff, man? Like, this that's, is criminal tell you, court shit. Van, it's a lie court for me. shit. I tell you all the time, Van. You shouldn't care. I don't. Well, you should technically. I take that back. Hold up. Why? Nope. Uh oh. She's, She's right. Uh -oh. She's right. Because it's a lack of accountability and a lack of deception as a man. You have to be right. mindful of somebody that doesn't want to be accountable and will deceive you. So the mm. lie is, I didn't make a statement. You have to be mindful of that as a black man. Because now you yeah. know, if it's something serious, he might not tell the truth. Right. But mm -hmm. the culture, the, the street community, I am vested. I have to care. I have to be like, oh, you know what? Damn, man, that was messed up. Now, I'm not going to let you know a bunch of people just kick his ass he's still a brother but as far as the street culture is done street culture no more street culture from gunner you don't want to hear for me anymore. for me for you for you for you all right yeah. cool glasses we appreciate you dropping in i gotta ask you Thank one you more question me. um uh, uh about this uh why don't you why don't you like you know what i'm saying why don't you lighten up dog you know what I'm saying? Like, like lighten up on Gunner, bro. Like, do a record I'm with Gunner. I'm not hard on Gunner. Bro, like, do Gunner a record with Gunner. Like, you know what you guys should do? 
Y'all should do the Double G Collective. <gasps> the Double G Collective. G, the Double G Collective. Y'all can start the whole movement. G Squared. Is, it's crazy. His name is Gunner, and he told like, <laughs> think about that. We appreciate you joining us on I I mean, with street shit. We coming to you because I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Street shit. We coming to you. Richard. That's Glass and Malone, love everybody. Y'all. Obviously, you guys know my love for Mountain Lion. You guys know my love for P22. Uh, special place in my heart. P22 going through some tough times right now. The future of LA's most famous mountain lion, LA's most famous animal is up in the air right now. And we have somebody that might be able to answer some of the questions that people have about P22 and about how we're supposed to live with the creatures in their natural habitat here as human beings uh, a little bit more generally. We have Beth Pratt right now, who is a wildlife wildlife advocate, author, and California director for the National Wildlife Federation. Beth Pratt, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us today on Higher Learning. Thank you so much for having me, Van and Rachel. Really appreciate you and appreciate you being a P22 fan. <laughs> Big fan of P22. Okay, so uh, update of the story right now. P22 um, has had a bad month. Uh, there have been a couple of different instances of P22 hunting people's pets. Yep. So, so this forced uh, officials here in Los Angeles to want to, I guess, check on him. Uh, do uh, the stress tests on him, or it guess you know what you'd be better off telling us what's going on. So tell us what 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 the status of P twenty two is right now, and why they decided to capture P twenty two. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, for those of us who have followed this cat. You know, he's part of the family for a decade. Something radically changed in his behavior, and it wasn't just the pets. Uh, you know, he actually has preyed on domestic pets before. Listen, I'm a dog owner. I have five dogs. I'd be devastated. But occasionally in the past 10 years, he has eaten a a dog here and there, a a koala, as we know, Uh, you know, probably the most unusual thing. Um, But what happened, I'd say the last six weeks, especially is, you know, one chihuahua, uh, Piper, and I want to, my heart goes out to the owner of all these dogs that have had an incident. Uh, Piper's owners reached out to me. They still love P22. They're devastated, but they, you know, acknowledge he was kind of just being a mountain lion. Um, That in itself wasn't as unusual, but all of a sudden he started really just staying in these very urban areas like Silver Lake, right? He's hanging out near Trader Joe's and not leaving where that was a huge difference in his behavior. Mm. That all of a sudden going from not preying on, you know, not really even being interested in dogs for the most part to all of a sudden having multiple incidents. And then also just not looking good. He, he obviously it looked like on the camera had some mange. Uh, He looked really gaunt and skinny to me. So listen, we've all had bad photos taken of us. So it's hard to tell. (laughs) Bad lighting makes us, makes us look bad. So it was a totality of that behavior that was so atypical for him that that made them make the, the hard decision to bring him in and take a look at what's going on. Can I ask you this, Beth? If and I I my knowledge is it's, it's very little. There really isn't much. And I'm new to Los Angeles. So, um, you know, I'm not as up to date on, you know, how much P22 means the community to the community. But I am curious and maybe some other people are wondering this. If he's being monitored, how is it that I read one of the the injuries that they think he has is that he was possibly hit by a car. How was, if he's being monitored, how did they not know this, know that maybe he was injured? Uh, What is it that they were actually monitoring? Yeah, so he's not monitored, you know, uh, 24 seven. I joke that he's the the Truman Show cat, right? That, Mm. but they actually, I mean, we don't have real time on him. So his GPS caller, that his bling, right? You know, the, the P22 bling, uh, that gives a point once every hour at night when mountain lions are most active and then one point during the day. So we really don't have real time information on him. The reason we only get that is if you wanted real time, that collar would have to be about this big to accommodate a bat. Oh, wow. That's a little too heavy. So, um, we really do rely on, um, you know, people's sightings to help fill in the blanks. The, the National Park Service researchers always appreciate people sharing videos and sightings with location because that helps fill in the blanks. And now what we have the past few years is everybody has a ring cam, right? So yeah. he's 
up a lot more. So that's why they didn't know, um, uh, you know, about that accident until some eyewitnesses came forward. And, and indeed, you know, after they captured him, it's, it's pretty obvious he was hit by a car as well. What makes P-22 so special, Beth? Yeah. Um, God, it's hard. You know, it, it's been really hard this week because, you know, P-22 is part of the family. I have pets. And so I'm, I'm, I'm the surges of emotion come up and it's hard to both try to realize that, you know, he's still alive and they're trying to keep him alive, but he's, you know, not going to be back in Griffith Park, but I still have to do my job like this, right? I'm just, I, I work in conservation. So when you said special, he is special. He's special to a lot of us. I think when he showed up in L.A. 10 years ago under the Hollywood sign, um, you know, most people write off L.A. as traffic and smog and, you know, no nature. And I think he showed a lot of us what was possible. Right. And, and that we could have wildness in our midst and that we we wanted it. He, he reminded us that he not left us. Plus, he's a Hollywood hero. Right. I mean, Hollywood loves an underdog story and. P-22 crossed two freeways, makes a home in Hollywood. He's as handsome as Brad Pitt, still struck. <laughs> uh, and also, you know, P-22's dating life is impacted by the 405 divide. We can all relate to that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Beth, <laughs> um, what do you think should happen next? The next should be the next chapter for P-22. So, you know, I'm a um, I'm a conservationist. I have a, a biology undergrad in the field, but I'm not a vet. And uh, I'll tell you, I want to assure people if they were doing something wrong, uh, I would be the first person to call them out on it. They are CDFW and National Park Service are keeping me constantly um, notified. Um, I don't know yet. I think I'm waiting for the health results. Um, if those check out. I think sanctuary is what I would advocate for. Absolutely. Um, it frustrates me that just because the agencies were preparing people for if things are uncovered, like if he is hit by a car, there could be internal injuries that are causing him suffering. But they were just preparing people much like, you know, we all have pets. We get that news we don't want. They were preparing people that if we do get bad news, that could be an option. But these agencies love P22 just as much as we do. Euthanasia is a last resort, but I, I at this point would probably be advocating for a sanctuary for him. I think that he he's he's grandpa age. Twelve is extraordinary. Yeah. Clearly what worked for 10 years, the lack of options, that island where he couldn't get out is not working. And he's listen, he's in distress. I've been following this cat closely for 10 years. He's not acting normally. So I, I don't think it's fair to put him back. Yeah. Mm. So, I, you know. There is a difference of opinion between Rachel and I here on the podcast as regards to Mountain Lion and P-22. I actually hold no cat responsible for anything that a cat has to do. I just don't. If I want to be honest with you, Beth, I think we're the aliens. I think that we've made these animals have to resort to things that they wouldn't normally have to do. We've shrunk their habitat. You know, they're all over this country... There's shrinking wildlife and shrinking options for these animals that live in nature. Rachel has advocated for getting rid of all of these animals. I and, didn't say but, that. No, but no, yes, no, she, no. Like she has. Say, she has. Beth, I did not say that. Rachel, keep the same energy about the things that you said about P22 no, in front of I, Beth. Now I, we have Beth here. Tell, no, no, tell no. Beth what you said about P22, Rachel. I'm sick of this. Tell Beth. I. P twenty two. P twenty two. You're not gonna yeah. embarrass me in front of company. <laughs> I, I, Beth. I'll let you answer the question. Whatever answer I give, uh, I'm gonna get in trouble. Is that it? <laughs> Book I have Rachel. <laughs> no, no. no so I want I'm, you to answer so, Van's so, question, so what and then what I'll. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I think, in all seriousness, there's a really fundamental question here in terms of our ability to be caretakers of nature and to be responsible as people who share this planet with wildlife and how we deal with animals like p22 and maybe animals that aren't so glamorous uh around us for people who are scared or don't understand or don't think that p22 or cats like him um have any place 
in a society with human beings and don't have that same sense of sort of like, I don't know, sympathy for them, what would you tell them? What would you tell people that don't understand the big deal that's being made about this mountain lion? Sure. Well, I want to hear Rachel. Rachel, what do you think? Because you, I, I would love to. <laughs> I would like I would like to stand corrected on, on what he said. I am not anti all animals or mm. all wildlife, but I do take issue with P22 on the attack of the domestic animals. I took the side of the Chihuahua recently. I'm not sure the other type of dog. And I just, it's hard for me. And then maybe this will help you you know answer the question because i'm on that side it's hard for me as a pet owner of two dogs for if a mountain lion and one of them's part chihuahua if a mountain lion attacked my dog i am against the mountain lion and and that's just where i stand so i'm one of the pe these people who it's hard for them to kind of reconcile the fact that you know wildlife is amongst amongst us but then we're also living in it as well is that the same energy van Nah, it's not. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Oh, please, uh, hey, 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 please. It's, it's, it's not you. Please, nah, I can say. I'm not. No. I'm not. He is an ad, a huge team P22 advocate. We have a whole segment dedicated. I'm not that excited about this segment. That's that's where I stand. <laughs> and how can you not be excited about this Look guy? Look at P22. Well, that's cute. Well, that's Look cute, Beth. That, that's cute. <laughs> Listen, um, I both agree with Van, but also understand your viewpoint. Listen, I have dogs as well, and I have, and I live, I I live actually live part time in LA and part time up near Yosemite. I have mountain lions in my backyard. But um, so I understand it, especially, you know, if you don't know mountain lion behavior, it, it, it can be scary. But I, I think a few things, you know, I just got back from COP15, which is the World Biodiversity Summit. And I think the larger messages here, you know, even if you don't like wildlife or, or don't in, you know, or don't, you know, or or have concerns about it, we have to figure this out. We are wildlife. We are part of the natural landscape. And we, you know, we're just coming out of or even still in a pandemic. Why are we having pandemics? Unnatural ecosystems, you know, unhealthy ecosystems. And you start pulling mountain lions out of anywhere and you start seeing impacts to the ecosystem that um, we don't even know how it's going to impact humans. I'll give you a great example. Go to the East Coast where I grew up, overpopulation of deer. They don't, the mountain lion went extinct from the East Coast decades ago. Uh, and what do you have? Lyme disease and way more incidents than out here so you know our health is tied to the health of the of you know these animals and in mountain lions are an integral part of the ecosystem um but what i will also tell you rachel and i hope it makes you feel better what happened with p22 um was is not what's typical there's no doubt mountain lions will prey on dogs if given the opportunity or other pets but attacks are exceedingly rare i mean you look at california a hundred years 40 million people, okay, 20 attacks. Now we never want it to happen. And, but that, those odds are so low. I mean, that you, you're more likely to be struck by lightning, uh, you know, to, than to be attacked by a mountain lion. Uh, and P22 is behaving that way for the most part. Not that other mountain lions don't prey on dogs, but there was something wrong with him. I mean, he, he obviously at 12 years old and whatever distress is going on, um, for that to happen, you know, in that close proximity. So I guess we take risks every day, right? Every time you get in your car, 4,000 people a year die on California roads because of cars. So you're taking more of a risk driving every day than having P22 in your neighborhood. So I don't know if, if that solves it for you, but at least I think it helps put the risk in perspective. And, and but I, I, I totally understand. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you this, as you're speaking towards, I guess, the people who more Think like me. Um, there was a viral tweet or something that went around that said, if you see a mountain lion, and Van, correct me if I'm wrong, if you see a mountain lion, that means he's not hunting you. Is that true? Right. So if I, I'm on, I do hikes and Vike and Van has kind of ruined that for me because he <laughs> was shocked that I don't take a stick or something. Take to something and to I, ward I, off the mountain lion. You're, in I, his, you're on his turf. This right. is how it started. The mountain lion's turf. See, see, Beth, you understand. This is how it started for me. I'm, I'm new to LA. I'm excited that I have mountains. I come from Texas, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, he's telling me that I have to be aware of this mountain lion. So, is that true? With, with, with what was going, what was said that if you see him, that means he's not hunting you. 
Right. Uh, one last thing I'll say. The first dog that was killed, Piper, the owners still love P-22. They don't blame mm. him. He has been a mountain lion. So I think you know, there is room for coexistence. But to your point, and first, Van and Rachel, listen, this is my offer. Let's get out with the biologists, both of you. Uh, and start tracking some cats so you can be out there. You can you can see the landscape. Let's do that. Yes. Okay. Okay. The holidays just came early for Van. You have okay. no idea. <laughs> you have no idea what you have just done for him. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> yeah. I would but, love uh, to. Yeah. To your point, and Van's right. Uh, now listen. This is what I always say with wildlife. There's never, you know, 100%. They are wild yeah. creatures, much like people. I can't predict what people are going to do half the <laughs> so time. True. But yes. Mountain lions are stealth predators. They're called ghost cats. If you see a mountain lion looking at you and regarding you, a lot of people mistake that for stalking. If they're stalking you, you're not going to see it. They're probably, <laughs> mountain lions are more afraid of us for the most part than, you know, than we are. Than they, they fear us and rightly so, right? But if you see one regarding you, he's probably trying to assess your threat and, you know, put you in his eyesight so that he knows what you're doing. So for the most part, I tell people, if you see a mountain lion and it sees you, you know, that situation is probably going to end well. Act big, yell, let them know you're in charge. Um, Van is absolutely right about that. Except again, never 100%, but that's that's pretty pretty typical. All right, last thing I'll say, you are a wildlife advocate. Um, what For people that want to help and people want to um, have a better, deeper understanding of their ecosystem and their world, uh, and might want to. I, I follow the wolf conservation uh, cons <laughs> conservation page now. I follow all of them. I'm getting into animals in yes. a real way. So for people that want to help or want to be more aware, what would you suggest that they do? Yeah, I think you know. First of all, look what you can do at home. Animals have a, a really hard time. Uh, you know, we're taking away so much of their habitat. So how can we look at what we're doing, our daily actions, to make sure that you know we're not making it more challenging for them in LA? Don't use rat poison. I mean, that is one of the biggest things I can tell you. P22, likely, you know, mange on him was poison. He had actually been um, really sick before some years ago from rat poison. Um, but also look at how you can coexist. If you do have dogs, if you do have livestock, do things to make sure, you know, you're not inviting conflict, right? I mean, if, listen, I never want to blame, you know, we should not be blaming the victim here. People should have a reasonable expectation of being able to walk their dogs at, at night, but do it smartly. Hiking, you know, walk in groups, have a radio on. Don't hike in very dark areas if there are mountain lions there. And obviously coyotes, right? You see a lot more of coyotes. Um, but that's you know, some of the small skill. The big skill is really vote, get involved with organizations that do wildlife crossing, uh, wildlife work like mine, Save LA Cougars, the National Wildlife Federation. We take volunteers. Um, and then Rachel, we'll work on you. I feel like your gateway, <laughs> your gateway animal. Let's not start with mountain lions. Let's start with something. Else. Something else. Give her something a little bit more, like furry. Yeah. You know, something yeah, she can maybe like, uh, stroke. Foxes. A, fo a fox. I love oh, foxes. Very cute. I love foxes. Yeah, Beth, Beth is a genius. <laughs> Beth, I was starting too big. I was up here. Yeah, she needs a fox. She can stroke the I fox. I love foxes. Beth I Pratt. just saw the foxes that foxes they got in Rocky. <laughs> what was it? Rocky Stadium. Did you see that? I was like, oh yeah. my god! Save the they look, foxes. Those are beautiful shots. They made, that, that looked like some stage. Oh, that, that was gorgeous. <laughs> okay, Beth. I don't want to hold you all day. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Hoping for the best for P twenty two. Um Me too. Probably should know in the next couple of days what's going to happen with I him. Think, you, think? Um, you know, I get an update every night. And again, I'm assuring everybody they are trying, yeah. but they can. Um, I think we will know at least an update on his condition and some options in the next day or two. Um, okay. you, know, you can follow me on Facebook or him on Facebook. I'm posting updates. But thank you for your well wishes for him. He's a special, special boy. So we really appreciate people coming together. And and Rachel, we'll get a, we'll get a fox for you. <laughs> Fox. Oh, my gosh. Please. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Beth. Thank you for joining us today. Thank on you, Learning. Beth. Okay. HBCU student arrested in class for not apologizing to a white professor. We've been talking about the HBCUs a lot. Um, this student was arrested in class. This happened at Winston-Salem State University. A student named Layella Marie was shown a bunch of videos circulated widely being led out by campus police stemming from a disagreement with the professor that devolved into a yelling match 
before the police were called. Donnie, give me the audio. Uh, so Winston-Salem State University has um, has responded to this and they say that they're investigating this entire thing. Uh, the student here says that the only thing she was guilty of was using the F-bomb. She said something that she claims was not worth an arrest. Obviously, she was being arrested for RDO, which is tantamount to resisting arrest and suffered minor injuries while she was in custody, all because she refused to Apologize to her teacher, whose name whose name is Doctor Cynthia Villa Gomez, an assistant professor of history. Apparently, she had told her six hours before a group project was set to be presented that the assignment had been completed incorrectly and needed revisiting. Uh, they refused to comply. They went back and forth, and it ended up with a black kid being led out of a room full of black students on tape to once again traumatize, 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 traumatize everyone. Rachel. I don't care how many F words this girl said at this this teacher. Uh, the fact that the police were called on this student clearly is unacceptable. And it shows that, because I saw a lot of discourse about people saying that non-Black people shouldn't be teaching at HBCUs. I actually was just about to say that because I agree. Okay, I don't agree to that. I don't subscribe to that belief that not that only black teachers should be teaching at HBCUs. She was teaching a hit. She was an assistant professor of history, not of African American history or something like that. I think that you can hire anybody of any race. The problem is that if you're going to have non-black people teaching majority black students, I don't know what con- there needs to be. You need to be able to under to like. Fully vet the person that's going to be in a classroom with black students because the reaction from this teacher and the police officers being there and the the fact that they actually came, arrested her, and this was fully carried out showed that everybody who was not black was scared of the black people in that room. That's the problem with this. You don't need to be in an HBCU if you're scared of black people, which she clearly is. What raising of the voice, first of all. It's, it's not on video, but it's being reported that the teacher uh, was raising her voice first. So she felt comfortable talking down to a black student. And then the moment that that black student reciprocated it, her first thing was, let me call the cops. That's unacceptable. And, w- and Winston, Winston, Salem Winston, Salem State, State Winston, Salem State needs to take the proper action, which is letting this teacher go. not just apologizing to the student, but there needs to be something else done because this is embarrassing to her. And she experienced something. As she shouted out, I don't know if it was in that video, she's valedictorian. This isn't a student who is the type of student who needs to be arrested and taken to jail over the fact that she had a disagreement. There's no type of student that should be arrested. I know that you didn't. No, I mean it more like Uh, if a student is is violent, if there's somebody who's attacking the teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that that happens, but you get it. There could be a student who is doing something criminal. Come on, don't. don't. Uh, Of course, of course, I've seen it. Um, (laughs) I have no problem with saying, I have no problem at all. Why? With saying that I would much prefer that black teachers teach at HBCUs. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm serious, why? It's an historically black college and university. A large portion of the reason that you go to these schools is to have a different, unique and very specific cultural experience. And that cultural experience is is definitely going to be informed by the teachers teaching the classes, by their level of familiarity with their students, 
by their level of immersion into the lives of their students and by their ability to connect to their students. And I'm sorry, that's a cultural thing. I never had a white professor when I was um <laughs> when I was at Southern. And to be honest with you, I'm not saying that they weren't there, they, they weren't people that were there, but I'm saying that like I liked that. And and to me, I would much prefer, much prefer that that presidents, faculty, administrators, people of that ilk, the starting quarterback, all of that stuff at HBCUs be black. So people I would I, much prefer that they be black. I, I I understand the people of power. I understand, you know, and it's I didn't go to an HBCU, so you could speak to this in a totally different way than I can. But non-black people go to HBCUs. Do you have a problem with that? I would think that you didn't, because I think that the sentiment is that everything is majority black. And you're going to get that at an HBCU that you're not going to get at a PWI. So if you got a, a couple of white professors sprinkled in there or her last name is Latina. So if you have a couple of that uh, other races sprinkled in there, then I would think that that wouldn't affect the impact of an HBCU as long as everything is majority black. A student and a teacher are completely different. We had we had a we had a white boy in the band at one point at Southern and that was fun. We had a white kicker at one point in Southern and that was typical. We actually started making some field goals. You know what I mean? You had somebody who could actually <laughs> kick the ball. Okay, that 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 was that was cool. A teacher, a little different. And this is a history teacher. I would expect the curriculum to be different. I would expect the person teaching it to be different. It doesn't have to be that way. But when I saw this, I automatically went, no. But you guys know how I am about the HBCU. I'm an HBCU radical. Keep the dancing dolls at the HBCU. We don't need them at USC. Keep the HBCU as black as possible. Blackity, black, black. It's okay. Black. There's enough diversity at HBCUs. People think the HBCUs don't have any diversity. They have a ton of diversity. A ton of diversity. Black people from everywhere, all different walks of life, whatever, whatever. A lot of different experiences, okay? They made us go to these schools and we made them ill and we made them fly. They're ours. <laughs> I hope something, we're, we're gonna stay on top of this whole thing and uh, the most important thing is what happens to this young girl. Winston-Salem University definitely needs to discipline this. This um, She gotta go. Uh, <laughs> She's gotta go. You're, you're done with she's proven. She's proven that she can't, she can't handle herself at an HBCU. Go. She's proven it. She's too scared. That's why she should have never been in. She's the first scared of black country. people. Yeah. Uh, before I leave, I want to say one thing. I want to turn everybody's attention. I'm not trying to trigger you guys. I want to turn everybody's attention to something that's going on right now uh, in Colorado. Okay, Colorado. Uh, a veteran uh, named Dalvin. U.S. Army veteran. He's beaten by the police in Colorado. I need everyone. The video is out there. It's in Colorado Springs. Okay, the video is out there. But this is more important than that. CSPD.internalaffairs at coloradosprings.gov. Internal Affairs office is from 8 to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. The phone number is 719-444. 7417. File a complaint on peace officers Matthew Anderson, badge number 4396, Colby Hickman, badge number 7090, and Christopher Hummel, badge number 6964, for using excessive force on Dalvin Gatson, beating the goddamn shit out of him for absolutely no reason. The case ended up being thrown out. Shout out to Mr. Checkpoint and always filmed the police for putting this on our radar. Uh, I don't want to trigger you guys with another video. The video is out there. You can see it. I'm asking you if you have even one or two minutes, I would like to clog the phone lines of the Colorado Springs Police Department because once again, we had to look at the brutalized face of a black man who was sitting in his car, 
doing nothing, was approached because of suspicion of a DUI and then subjected to an unlawful detention and then beat to a bloody fucking pulp. If you got time, call Donnie Melback. Uh, before we get to Melback, just uh, another point on that. The officers were smiling and taking pictures of themselves afterwards. And um, with his body? No, uh, not with his body. But there's a picture of one of the officers like showing one his bloody knuckles smiling. And in the body cam footage, I haven't watched the video, but the body cam footage descriptions say that they are like joking and laughing about what they just did. What what is the what is the state of uh, this black man? Uh, he's doing better. Okay. You can tell that. I don't want to make any assumptions about him. I want everybody to watch the video and tell me if this was a fair uh, interaction. If this was somebody, this man was living in his car. So I don't want to talk mm -hmm. too much about about that. I want people to look at that. And kind of make the determination about how they feel about that. Um, but this is clear cut and it's on video. And he's so a veteran? Got, he's a veteran. Army veteran. They also had they also talked to him while he was handcuffed to the bed with his face the the, the looking like fucking two face. They did a number on him. Um, so there you have it. Donnie Mailbag. Thank you for, for adding that, Donnie. Appreciate you. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. Black Dumbledore wants to know, what was the question that Van was uncomfortable asking in front of pretty hair? <laughs> the amount of of the the orgasm percentage you have to have for your partner to be considered a good lover. I saw this question for women. It's a question you did, a question for women. When you say the orgasm percentage, you mean like the number of orgasms versus the or, time you've had sex? No. Yes, like how like Like how many times so you I, have I, an I, orgasm? I, I, so no, not how many times during sex. I saw this not, whole thing about I okay. saw this whole thing about women who are like thirty five and have never had an orgasm. Yeah, like they've never had one orgasm. That like they don't have one. So the question is, what percent? Because I don't know what the hell is going on there. I mean, it's like I don't. There's obviously there's something. I don't want to talk about lady parts, but there's something that work. I don't know what's happening there. You know, maybe oh. they, they fucked every member of the Trump family. I don't know. We what's should going have on. Shan on to really, Shan, to really, to really get friend. into this conversation. Love yeah. Shan. Love Shan. So love Shan. So the question is, what percentage of the time? Thank God you didn't ask this. Uh, yeah, this is the question. What percentage of the time would you be having to have an orgasm for you to consider your partner to be a good lover? Oh, a good lover. I, I, don't, I mean, more than half. <laughs> for, for more than sure. half. I mean, yeah, it's gonna have to be more than half. I would think. Yeah. Well, you half. don't know, but I would also say I don't that. Know. But also, what type of orgasm am I getting? You know what I mean. Doesn't matter. I think an orgasm. Well, okay. Well, well, you should definitely be able to get an orgasm if it's not if you're not getting it through penetration. That's what I'm saying. You should Th that's easily be able to get it the other way. So that's what. So, so that's what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm saying well, then is, it's a hundred percent because you 100%. should be able to do one or the other. I easy. feel like we might even talked about. I this I think before. we kind of did, but I don't think it yeah. was a question that yeah. you. It wasn't a question of the day or. I saw this. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing these other videos. These are the YouTubes I'll be watching. This if it's lady. Any type of orgasm, y'all need to be doing toys, y'all. Because like, yes, I get it. Women don't always get it from penetration, but there are plenty yeah. of other ways to have an orgasm. This lady, she's 36. She's a businesswoman. They showed they showed her like on the treadmill. They showed her like doing a spreadsheet. They showed her all this. Says, Hi, my name is blank blank blank. I've never had an orgasm. I was like, oh shit, I'm about to watch this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what the fuck? I was like, <laughs> I was like, God damn, nigga, you were you struggling? I was like, I'm about to watch this, and I watched it. I was like, okay, cool. All right, uh, next question. All right, uh, Bird Noah asks, what song, when you hear it, brings you immediately back to high school? High school? So, uh, uh, Candy Rain by Soul For Real. That's high school for you? That's freshman year. 
two songs and they were done i love those guys well that was nice it was freshman year jameer holmes used to carry the cd around she carried it around I, damn i wanted jameer i wonder i wonder i wonder what's going on with jameer but like jameer holmes used to carry the cd around well yeah whatever go this is the song wait this isn't it watch it be like genie in a bottle by christina aguilera or some <laughs> <No>. shit. <laughs> it's not hey <laughs> no why can i not i can hear Hold on. <laughs> this is going to bother me because I'm, I'm not looking at the right album. Oh, I know whose album is on. I'm tripping. Hold on. Hold on. I can show you better than I can tell you. Okay, this is the song that reminds me of high school all day. What's that? I can't hear it. <laughs> Cash money rich niggas. Loud fights oh, make Big rims, nigga, that's my life. You when I pull up to the club, nigga, that's my life. Everybody in the top of the that's not good. But my dumb is almost bigger, nigga, that's my bling bling. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that reminds me all day of high school. Genie when I pull and up to the club, genie in a, a bottle. Like, Man, man, when I pull up to, the, I love that loud pop, loud pipes, big ribs, nigga. That's my. When I pull up to the club, nigga, that's my night. Like, well, that's my night, nigga. When I pull up to the club, it's my <laughs> night, <laughs> nigga. It's not your night. It's, you, it's nothing you can do. When I pull up to the club, nigga, that's my <laughs> night. All right, move on. Mm -hmm. All right, next one is from Savon Twenty Eight. What's something that you experienced that can't be properly understood or explained to another person unless they were there too? What a fantastic question. Uh, the moment in my life I realized God was real. Oh, man. Jeez, how do I talk that? I was 25 years old. I, I believed in God before, but I had never felt God. And I remember where and when I felt God, and I don't care what you guys say. How's that what? sound? Can say you whatever you want. Can you say where Logan and when? Logan Paul. I was on the levee. <laughs> oh, I was I was on the levee, and I was like it. I was walking along the levee, and it was at a rough time. Uh and something happened that I can't explain. Like my my body pushed up to the top of my head, and then all of a sudden something grabbed me, and said mellow out. And it was a, it was a weird thing to where like I looked around and like my eyes and spirit opened up to like a different type of experience. It's a fact. I always remember this moment. I've tried to recreate it since, and I'll be like, hey. Hey God, let's do that again. Be like, nah. nah. <laughs> I had you one, one time. time. Yeah. Um, okay, mine does not compare to that, but the moment that I first saw Copper in a picture. Oh, that's dope. Because my sister was trying to get him. She found him because she almost hit him with her car and she took him to the vet to see if he was chipped to help someone find him and he wasn't and she sent the picture and she's like oh i found this dog can you see if someone at work wants him and i would just stare at him i never had a dog in my life we grew up with cats i just stare at him and then i would go home and i would stare at him some more and i was fixated on him i knew he was mine and i couldn't explain it and it was i was drawn to him in a way and nobody i shouldn't have had him he escaped from the owners that he was was with after my uh, mom found him i mean my sister found him he escaped they found him again they called my sister not even the other people who were with him it was like he was always meant to be mine i can't explain that feeling also the feeling of going on the bachelor i mm tried to not go. I told the people no. I said that show is not for black people. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, Rachel, if you do it, it'll be different. And that day I was supposed to go, we were supposed to go to brunch, get tipsy, go down to the audition just to see what it was like. 
And that blew up. And my home, one of the homegirls went anyway. She's like, come down here, come down here. And I had this, I was at work and I just had this feeling of you're going to regret it if you don't go. You're going to regret it. You need to go. And I was pulled. It was like an out of body experience. I was just doing it because I felt I was supposed to go rather than that I wanted to go. And even when I was there, I tried to turn in my application and leave. And they were like, no, we'll skip you to the front line. And then the rest is history. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's a good answer. That's what a good question. That's a, uh, one yeah. more, Donnie. All one right. more. <clears throat> Last one from Cheese Robit. They ask if you had if you had to have another pet that was not a dog, what would it be? Got to go with Beth Pratt Fox. Beth Pratt Fox. You know, people think that for me it would be Mount Lion, but let me tell you why it wouldn't be. Because you can't really. It's not fair. You can't. Okay, but I would go like seventy thirty Wolf Dog. And have like a great big dog, wolf dog. Have you, you know met anybody I mean? who has a wolf dog? I saw a wolf dog one time at the Century City Mall. It's the only time I've ever seen one. Gigantic wolf dog to hang out with me. You know what I mean? I would have one. Of, I would have one of those. Have you seen them? You've had. You would have to have one from the beginning. Carissa Thompson has one. She thought that she was rescuing a husky, and turns out mm -hmm. it was part wolf. And it's gigantic. I've never seen it in person, but, and I hear that it's not friendly with most people. So it's a, uh, but mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. The, the animal dog. probably knows how you feel about it. That's probably why it's not friendly with you. <laughs> okay. It's true. Do you have an unexpected ally of the week? I did. I do. Okay. Give it to me. It is, hold on. It is the United States Postal Service. Okay. Because they are honoring John Lewis with a new stamp. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's pretty cool. It looks really good. Mm. So they're they're commemorating the life of the late representative congressman John Lewis with this new stamp and they're going to release it next year. Hmm. Um the Texas man I saw here I uh, really thought this was good. Who's giving away 300 cans of baby formula because there's still a baby formula shortage. I saw this guy. I saw this, this kind of popped up and I thought this is good. This is going to help little babies kind of get the food that they need. Okay. Let me, let me pull this video. Let me pull this guy up real quick. And we don't talk um, about that enough. Hold on. This is old as fuck. How did this pop up in my shit? Okay. When was it? This is from May. Okay. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> All right. This is Benji R. Slavnowski. No. You're done. Uh, so good for him. But I, I guess I, I don't know why this popped up in my shit earlier. But yeah, so shout out to Ben. You know, okay, so I'll, so shout out to Benji, but I also do another one. Good deed of the week is goes to Tyler Perry for being the godfather to the baby of of uh of Harry and Meghan. I mean, that doesn't shock me. Didn't he pay for their security or something like that after the the royal family turned their backs on them? Gave him like a plane for something? All right, man. Uh, that doesn't count. <laughs> Definitely doesn't. I just wanted to talk about that. Okay. Um, tell you thing, Caps Off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys.